Hello, welcome to lesson five. Here we're going to continue working with if statements, but we're going to learn how to use what we call nested if statements. And all that means is that you can have an if statement inside of another if, uh, and you can have that inside of another if. You can have as many ifs as you need inside of one another to control the program the way in which you need to control it. Um, there's really not a great way to explain why you would need to do this without just showing you a quick exam example. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let's create, for instance, a variable, an integer. Let's call it the temperature, All right? And let's, for now, let's set the temperature equal to uh, 95 uh, degrees, okay, 95 degrees. And we're going to do this in terms of Fahrenheit here. So that's, that's going to be a pretty warm summer day, for, for instance. Next, let's create a Boolean which remember are true false type of variables. And let's call it uh, the Boolean we're gonna name Sunny. And we're gonna say that right now it's true. So right now we're with these variables, we're just creating some variables. One of them is the temperature. We're saying it's 95 degrees outside. One of them is a true false statement. So we're saying Sunny is true. So right now it's, tr it's sunny outside and the temperature is 95 degrees. And so what we wanna do is create some if statements to print this back to the screen and um, kind of illustrate the nested if structure of what we can do. Now we can do a lot of what we're going to do here in other ways. You'll find that a lot in programming there's five different ways to do anything. What I'm trying to do here is show you the core things you need to give those tools to you so that you'll be able to then figure out how you'd like to accomplish something. So let's put an if statement. Let's do something easy real quick. Let's say uh, if the temperature, uh, let's say if the temperature is greater than 90 degrees, uh, let's open up a block here. This is an if block. We have opening and curling, co closing curly braces. We'll do system dot out dot uh, print ln something like this, and in here we'll say it is hot outside. Okay. Right now, if we run this right now, we're going to get it's hot outside. Of course, we are because the temperature is 95. Temperature is greater than 90, so we're going to print that. Now we can have a corresponding else statement that will trigger any time the if statement doesn't trigger and then we can just say system dot out dot print ln something like this and then we can say it is not hot outside so what do you think will happen if we trigger this as is of course this is going to be fine but if we lower this down to 75 degrees then the upper if will not trigger therefore the else statement will trigger and then it'll say it is not hot outside all right so let's put this back where it was this is so far everything that we've done um, in the previous lesson with if and else statement pairs, um, you should understand this 100%. Now, we also have this other piece of information. We know that we have, we know if it's sunny or not. Right now it's telling us based on how we've set it up here that it is indeed sunny outside. So what we can do if we want to also illustrate that knowledge is inside of this if statement, if the temperature is actually is greater than 90, and after we've printed out the statement that it is hot outside, we could put another if statement here, right? We could say, for instance, we could say if the variable that we're calling sunny is true, right? If sunny is true, then we could have a statement system dot out dot print ln something like this. We'll put a semicolon at the end. And then here we can have um, it is also sunny outside. Right, So that's an if statement if sunny is true, but notice we can also have an else statement that applies to this if statement because either, see the variable sunny can either be true or false. If it's true, we're going to print this. If it's not true, then we need to have something to catch that. So let's print out, print ln, and then we can say if it's not sunny outside, then we can probably say it's cloudy outside. It is also cloudy outside. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit a period here, and let's go ahead and save it. Uh, now, what do you think is going to happen if we run this program? So the temperature is above 90 degrees, so this should trigger. This whole block should trigger here, right? Then we're going to print out that it's hot outside, but then we're going to do another if comparison. If sunny is true, then we're going to print this. Um, else, if sunny is not true, we'll print this one down here. And notice that this if statement is paired with the nearest else statement. So these two go together and this outer if statement is paired with the outer 
this outer if is paired with the outer else. So when you look, that's why indentation here is so important in programming because I can look at the inner indentations and I can know that these go together. The outer ones, I know that these go together. So because the temperature is greater than 90 degrees, we know that this block is going to execute. Let's run it and see what happens. It is hot outside. It is also sunny outside. So this triggered. This statement was true. And so then we trigger this. Now let's go and change. Just let's leave the temperature alone, but let's change the sunny variable to false. What do you think is going to happen now? Again, we'll be inside of this block. We will print this statement out. But when we get down here, if sunny equals true, well, that's not going to happen. So this statement will not execute. Since there's an else statement, this will be the, the catch-all. This will execute as the companion to this if that didn't execute. And so it'll also say that it's cloudy outside, which is exactly how that works. All right. Now, now that you know how it works in the upper if here, let's work on the else. Remember, this upper if only triggered if the temperature was actually greater than 90 degrees. But there's also another else down here. What happens if we're lower than that? So let me go and reset everything back to how it was true down here. And I can basically have almost exactly the same type of logic here if uh, in fact, it is exactly the same logic here. If we copy these two lines, I could just type them in again. But if I just copy them, what I'm essentially wanting to do is paste the exact same code down here. So if the temperature is greater than 90, we're going to execute and print that it's hot. But we're also going to check and see if it's sunny. And if it is, we'll do that. And if it's not, we'll say it's cloudy. But if the temperature is not greater than 90, we'll bounce down and we'll execute this in which case we'll print something out and again we will check to see if it's sunny and we'll print the same information. So now no matter what combination you put here, let's say I put um, 74 degrees here, then we print it. It is not hot outside, it is also sunny, which is a reflection of what we have here. If we put false here and run it again, it is not hot outside, it is also cloudy outside. Now in this case, because the temperature was low, we bounce down to the else right and we checked the if the if uh, was also not correct so we bounced to this inner else and that's why we got the cloudy so you know there are other ways to do and to pull off exactly what we have you can you can have different arrangements of if statements in order to to do exactly what we're doing here but this is quite nice because when you're reading the code it's very easy to see okay if the temperature is greater than 90 then we're going to execute this block otherwise we're going to execute this block then when you're looking inside of the blocks you can see okay if sunny is true we're doing this otherwise we're doing this and the way it's indent indented here makes it very easy to look at your nested if statements and your nested else statements to see what's going to happen um, you know as you get into programming I can't tell you uh, how many times you'll need to use nested statements um, and, and in fact I also want to point out to you that this inner if here is a one line inner if statement right if I wanted to I can open a curly bracket here and then for this else statement, I can open a curly bracket here and I could write it like this. This is perfectly fine. Um, notice that the inner if has opening and closing braces. The else has opening and curly braces. Everything's going to work just fine. If I put, you know, 98 degrees or something, everything's going to run just fine. Um, especially if I had multiple statements inside of this if that needed to be executed, I would be required to have these braces. I just chose to initially write it like this because it was a single a single thing that needed to be done in the if and a single thing that needed to be done in the else so it's a little bit easier to read I think here but doing something like this is perfectly fine as well so as you program in Java you're going to find that there are lots of different ways to write things there are lots of different ways to organize things and there are lots of different ways to get to the answer uh, or to whatever it is you're trying to do um, so when you're programming just try to pick a path and try to pick uh, writing your code in a way that's easy for you to read and easy for other people to read as well. So what I'd like you to do now is go on to the exercise and try to write a program yourself that requires the use of nested if so that you can get some practice with it and you're going to find out that it's really not hard once you get the hang of it.